Welcome back to our class session series where we are finishing up now the topic of formal and informal theater spaces. Today we're going to start off of course by defining informal theater spaces, getting a bit of the history and context, looking at the different types as well as zoning in on the informal theater spaces in Trinidad and Tobago. So as we would have defined in the previous sessions, formal theater spaces are purpose built. So that means that they are designed with performances in mind. They may have a stage, they may have lighting and sound fixtures, an area for the audience to sit. They may be adaptable spaces, but they are particularly designed for performances. Informal theater spaces, on the other hand, are usually public spaces or open spaces that have no specific structure or design, and they may be used for other things. So you might think about stadiums, you might think about yards, you might think about um, promenades and public spaces that we may have a performance in, but they have to be adapted right so they typically facilitate smaller and more intimate audiences just for the mere fact that they are not designed for performances in mind but we may adapt them and use them as such so when it comes to caribbean history informal theater spaces are particularly important to our performance and festival history and this is because, of course, before we had purpose-built spaces, before the theater was something that was established, our earliest productions, and this is, doesn't only limit itself to theater productions, but any type of creative work or creative performance, dance, music, singing, poetry, um, calypso, all of these things used to happen in open air spaces. And if we think back, of course, to the history of Carnival, you remember that the yards, particularly the barrack yards in Trinidad and Tobago, were really, really important to the development of things like calypso, stick fighting, and our early traditional carnival characters. So there are many rituals, festivals, and performance traditions that were brought to the Caribbean by different groups. And then there are others that our cultural groups have influence. So some of our performance practices were brought like Ramlila and stick fighting, whereas some were born here, Calypso and Limbo. But you find that many of them or all of them would have happened outdoors. Even in the history of the Caribbean, during the time of plantation slavery, the enslaved person in the formal West Indian theater, so this is when we had started having Shakespeare plays and so, they had the job of reserving a seat for their master by sitting in the, in the theater until their, their slave master arrived. So they would be allowed to watch the play from the, from the upper gallery. And because of this, we would have then taken what we saw in the theater and carried it back to the yard, to the barns, to the, our informal spaces and developed what we call farce. And we know we have looked at the genres of theater. So farcical versions of scenes from Shakespeare and other plays. Um, there was also segregated seating in Jamaican theater. So this is where the cost of a theater ticket in a formal space was beyond what the average enslaved or ex-enslaved person could buy and so the informal the spaces are where they would have really concentrated their energy and their attention so informal theater spaces in essence are really important to our history and you find that in order to stay true to their roots many of our folk performances still happen outdoors so let's take the example of Canboulet and the origins of our carnival. Most of us would have seen this film before, but this scene particularly demonstrates how informal theater spaces were the roots of our performance. Hey, 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 hey. Fight to the death hey. or live as free. Hey, 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 hey. And woman. Papa Pua. Pressure for me Papa, from Pua. both man and the society is only one thing they don't want from me. Barack Yard man don't take responsibility, but his blood on sand anytime they talk. Santi Manite.
So there you get a bit of a glimpse at how things like extempo would have been developed in informal theater spaces. So they weren't going into the, the theaters and, and things like that to develop these things. It would have been in their yards and the spaces where they reside. So now let's focus on some types of informal theater spaces. The first one that we're going to look at generally is open air. This literally means that it is a fixed location outdoors where performance is held. In some cases, there are parts of the stage that may be covered, so not the entire thing um, is outdoors, but the seating definitely is. And it might have different seating arrangements. Open air just means to talk about any type of theater that is not enclosed within the walls of a building. So let's look at amphitheaters. This is a Naprima Bowl amphitheater. Naprima Bowl has an indoor and outdoor seating area and an amphitheater is a common form configuration for informal theater spaces that are open air and this is a boomerang from when i went to see a performance in the naprima bowl amphitheater so you can see that the seating arrangement is more or less proscenium but it's open air this is a photo from another performance that was put on at Bishops High School and Trinity College East where they performed a play called Dance Bongo Outdoors and I'm going to show you a bit of a clip from this as well. Let's look at another type of open air theater. This is a little bit more specific. Street theater, just as the name suggests, happens outdoors in public spaces. So whereas the video that we just watched would have happened in the quadrangle or in a common area in the school's courtyard, street theater now happens literally on the street. And even more specifically, promenade theater is a type of street theater that moves from one place to the next. So regularly, street theater might be in one particular location. So don't get confused by the name. The reason they call it promenade is because it comes from the French word promenade, which means to walk. So promenade theater doesn't mean that it is situated at a promenade. Street theater actually does because street theater means that it's in one place in the public. Promenade theater might start at the bottom of the street and then walk to the top. So think about a carnival performance or a, a parade or a festival that moves. And we looked at many festivals that move through the streets. Those are all considered types of promenade theater. So with both of them, there's no specific paying audience most times because it's performed in public, but anybody in close proximity to it would be able to take in the show. So we might think about Ramlila as a form of 
open air theater but it is not street theater because most times it will happen in a park or something like that rather than a public thoroughfare like a road and then it's not promenade theater because it doesn't move so we are going to use the example of Kanbule, the performances of the Kanbule reenactments as it is called that has been performed in many different spaces including open air amphitheater and street theater and we're going to see if we can use this example to clarify the differences and similarities between all of them so in this next clip the Kanbule performance was put in the parking lot of the National Academy for the Performing Arts. This means that it's open air because it is, of course, outdoors, but it's not street because it doesn't happen on the street. Um, so everything in this space would have had to been would have had to have been brought in all the lights, all the set, and everything like that. The microphones. These things are not things you're going to find in a parking lot. We come here from Christ England to say we can live on. Well, he is for a good surprise because you and your boys are so wise. Because for right, we well intend to fight. Later on that year, it was taken to the Naparima Bowl Amphitheater, so it's semi-indoor, outdoor. <laughs> originally happened as street theater at Piccadilly Greens in Port of Spain and you will notice in this video that the audience are all seated well most of the audience is seated because it is in one fixed place it's not in promenade theater it doesn't move from one place to the next help we gladden we spirit yeah. and help we prepare for whatever fate it is we're going to meet out there today only action, action. Come, not Jane. Say something like you. We are laughing now. Say something for me. Papa Pua. Papa Pua. Papa Pua. Papa Pua. Call me Chantwell or Kai Sonia. I fulfill the same function. It's part of the tradition. We can trace to African land, political or social matter. Scandal or even laughter. I sing in we feelings and all we want to say. Santi Malite. Papa Pua. Papa Pua. Papa Pua, Papa Pua. Well, all you say, oh, we pretty. Papa Pua, but pretty don't bring me no money. Papa Pua, it's double pressure for me. Papa Pua, good man and the society. Papa Pua, it's one thing they just want from me. Correct, yeah, man, not the responsibility, but it's blood on sand any time they tackle me. Such a Now, this is when the performance from the Cambule production collaborated with the Tribe Carnival Band in the Tribe Sunset Festival in 2022, and they had Promenade Theatre, which moved up and down Aria Pita Avenue in Port of Spain. <laughs> The land of the elusive Coquico and radiant scarlet ibis that was making its nest in mangroves. They say the ibis symbolizes the human soul. Well, if that is the case, then our soul red with fire and passion. From the first peoples, the Taino and Galinago, come all 
all the way down to the north. Our love for freedom has carried us through the centuries, bringing us ultimately to this point in time when all of our joy and pain now finds its voice in who we is today. Now together in one voice, we can say, onward into forever. So just to clarify, once again, open air theater is any performance that happens outdoors street theater happens in public thoroughfares like streets <laughs> and promenade theater is a form of open air and possibly street theater that moves from one place to the next <laughs> The final type of informal theater space, which we have covered slightly as we looked at the big black box in Port of Spain, is black box. This is also known as flexible theater. It is the most flexible type of theater space because it's a simple, open, empty space. It's not always black, but most commonly it is because it's a neutral color. It has no fixed seating or staging. So this means that the seats and the stage can take on any configuration that you want within the bounds of this space so you can alter it to suit your needs if you would like it to be an arena if you'd like it to follow a thrust if you'd like the audience to be seated on one side like a proscenium because you can adjust where the seats and where the stage goes it's really very very flexible and it's a multi-purpose multi-use space so this is semi-formal because it will usually have the types of lighting and sound facilities and offstage areas that a formal space would and it can usually entertain just smaller performances and audiences but the informal aspect of it is the sense that it is multi-form so on the left hand side you will see the black box space in the new trinidad theater workshop in st Clair. so you see things like the stage this had to be built um the curtains these things would have had to come into what is basically an empty room on the right hand side here you will see the same these pictures are now from the old trinidad theater workshop and you see the audience is really small really intimate and here you have the audience seated on three sides so it's sort of a thrust space and that brings us to the end of our topic on informal theater spaces really looking forward to your answers on the quiz that are going to test everything that we learned in the last three videos